I speak in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In last week's gospel reading, we heard the well-known parable of the sower. This week, we hear the second half of the story, the twin parable of the wheat and the weeds. How it offered us last week a beautiful vision of God's radical abundance, or rather radical extravagance. God's grace overflowing and lavishly shared with no exception. However, as often happens, the disciples don't quite get this message and need a second parable to understand Jesus. Thus, the lectionary provides us another version of the story. The overall theme, though, of all three of our readings is a message of idolatry and assurances, where we place our assurance and ultimately, who is God? To get at these two questions, I feel it best to spend the majority of our time breaking open this rich text of Isaiah. The selection we get is only a few lines, so I think it would be helpful if we highlight two key verses. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Is there any God beside me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Whenever you hear, thus says the Lord, you better listen up. Because the prophet has something good to say. If you're to flip back to chapter 38 and 39, you would hear the story about how King Hezekiah, who is the king of Judah, and Isaiah had a sort of falling out. They were not on speaking terms, so God calls us to get really sick, near the point of death. Because of this, Isaiah is forced to go pray by the king's bedside. Basically, God is twisting Isaiah's heart to go hang out with his friends. The king recovers and begins to receive gifts from other dignitaries, sort of get well soon presents. But when Hezekiah asks Isaiah what he thinks about the gifts, Isaiah says, Thus says the Lord, and then launches into a 15 chapter diatribe. <laughs> so when you read, thus says the Lord, it's going to get juicy. So Isaiah delivers what most scholars summarize as six mini sermons. Uh, if you feel that Kyle or I might go on too long in our sermons, remember you could have Isaiah as your priest. But the theme for chapter 44 is waiting confidently when God seems to and the basic question rests in the fundamental assertion that there is no other God except for our God. There is no other Lord except the Lord. He is both our Creator and our Redeemer, the Alpha and the Omega. What Isaiah is rebuking is Hezekiah's tendency, as well as our own tendency, to place our trust in something other than God. What we learn from Isaiah and his message is that our God is the same God today as he was yesterday and will be tomorrow. And most importantly, we learn that we are saved by the God who made us, not by the gods who we make. False gods or idols are those things that we raise above all else. When you find yourself in desperation, to what or to whom do you turn? Why turn to earthly things, Isaiah asks, when you can turn to the one who made the earth? Do not turn to stone figures, but instead to the one who formed the stone. There are no other gods, just as there is no other rock. I know not one. God is the rock of ages who cleanses us from the guilt and power of sin, and it is upon God in part that we must surely that God is our sure foundation. As the psalm states, the stone that the builders rejected became the chief cornerstone and it is upon this very rock that Peter is told to build Christ's church. Okay, what am I getting at here? And how does it relate to the wheat and the weeds? Isaiah, as well as Jesus in his parable, is concerned about the harvest of God's creation. We would be rather negligent to not acknowledge that despite the splendor of this world, we have not yet made it to the promised land. 
labor is the work of the enemy. As Matthew says in verse 28, what is this enemy that Matthew speaks of and gets in our way? I believe that this is precisely the evil of idolatry that continues to separate us from laying our trust at the feet of the only one who can satisfy. We put our trust in false idols that continue to blind us from living in perfect freedom. False idols are those darn beings that continue to creep up into our hearts. And my brothers and sisters, the more blind we become under our, the pretense of false freedoms, the more the weeds begin to resemble the weeds. We allow these intruders to take over the hearts and choke the good seed that tries to break through from them. The challenge presented to us in the gospel message today and by Isaiah is placing our assurance in the rock of our salvation. For there is no other rock, I know not one. Take the time to pray. Pray with your family. Allow God to enter into your hearts. Allow yourselves to listen. And not be driven by the ego-driven self. Allow the good seed to take hold. And as Matthew says, shine on 